Let's go. It's your man, Mike Bowens. I want to talk to you about a powerful message. This message is, sh is sure to inspire somebody. I want to talk to you about being holy, humble, and hungry. That's right. Holy, humble, and hungry. So the first one I want to talk to you about is being holy. Listen, folks. Holy means separated for the works of God. Right? That means that there's a certain lifestyle that God requires for us to live. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Now, I know we got people that's just running wild. They just doing whatever they want to do. And trust me, I've been there. You know, there were times where I did things and I'm saying, what the heck am I doing? Just, just running crazy. Right? So I'm not even judging. I'm not even throwing stones at nobody. What I'm trying to say is this. I'm just trying to sound the alarm. Like, listen. You made those mistakes in your past, learn from them, repent from them, turn from it, and then go on the path of righteousness. Because guess what? It's not worth living a life and getting your dream house, working to get your dream car, your dream career, your dream spouse, whatever it is that you acquire in life, right? And, and, and you got it, but you're not living a holy life. And now when your spirit departs from your body, you don't see the Lord. You don't dwell with him forever and ever because man is made to live forever because we're made in the image of God. But that's why, because he says, be ye holy for I am holy. So we need to live holy. What we watch, what we listen to, conversations that we have, our lifestyle should be a reflection of God. And when you do so, you don't pray. When you when you live a holy lifestyle, you're not gonna be praying to God like, uh, excuse me, eh, excuse me, eh, um, can you bless me, please? I I know I don't deserve it. I know I'm not worthy. See, when you don't live right, you don't go to the throne of grace with confidence. You can't go to the throne of grace with boldness because your conscience is trying to kill you. Your conscience is telling you, you know what you did last night. You know what you did is wrong. But that's why you need to repent, right? Repent. Say, God, I'm sorry. I did this and mean it from the heart. Help me to overcome this. Help me to change. You know I'm not perfect, but help me to change. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but each time he gets back up. And you say, how could he still be righteous if he falls seven times? Because he keeps getting back up, right? He keeps getting back up. Though you make mistakes, you keep getting back up. Though you make mistakes, mistakes, you keep repenting and keep asking God to help you to change. Keep renewing your mind with the word of God, right? Keep putting yourself in an environment to thrive and not in an environment to backslide, not in an environment to keep doing the same sins over and over and over, right? You want to change, put yourself in, a, in an environment for change. Put yourself in a church with people who love God and worship God, who's striving, right, to enter into the kingdom of heaven when it's their time to leave this earth. And also striving to live their best life now while they are on the earth. See, for me, it's a balance. Some people, they just, they living to die. And some people, they just living for now. For me, it's a balance. I want to live my best life now, day by day, and maximize my seasons so that when it's my time to go, I go and see my heavenly father. I walk on the streets to go with Jesus for all eternity. Okay? So it's a balance for me. But every single day, I know where I missed the mark. I know where I missed it. And I say, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. Help me to change. Help me to do better. Right? So before my head ever hits that pillow, I'm repenting and saying, God, I'm sorry. Help me to change. Help me to do better. And then I give praise and thanks and I move on and live a holy lifestyle yeah so that means i'm not going to the club i'm not you know edit 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 no i'm not i'm not i'm being church lifting my hands and praising and worshiping and people can say whatever they want about that but that's where you're going to find this one and so you know even my bible studying my bible reading my word if i can't sit down and read it i'm going to listen to it right because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word i'm going to listen to it I'm going to take up that time that I can listen to the word of God, that I can stay encouraged, that I can keep reminding myself of the promises of God and the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God in my life. Okay. And I can teach that to my children, right? That I could 
leave an inheritance to my children's children. Yeah, I'm going to leave them property, houses, and land, but I'm also going to leave them spiritual guidance. Leave them examples of how I live in this earth. Also, um, as a holy lifestyle, you know, I want to make sure that it's, it's, it's also done in the dark. Not just in front of people, not just in front of the camera, you know, because anybody can get up there and preach and say whatever, blah, 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 the Lord is good enough. But their lifestyle behind the curtains, behind the scenes is jacked up. Me personally, I want to make sure that my lifestyle, when nobody else sees me, is the way that it's supposed to be. Because you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. When you study the spiritual realm, and there's different books that's written on it, and the Bible is written on it, how there's angels around you, and they write down everything that we do and say, and even with the attitude that we do it and say it. And so you can't say when you stand before the Father, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. He said, angel gonna say, yes, you did. Yes, you did. You did it on this date. You did it on this time. But when you repent, the blood of Jesus washes everything away and throws it to the sea of forgetfulness that he remembers it no more. So why would I not strive to live holy and when I miss the mark, repent so that God can wash away all my sin. And so that when he sees me, he sees himself in me. He sees the blood covering me and he don't see my past mistakes. Number two, remain humble, right? As God exalts you, as God blesses you, as God expands your business, as God expands your ministry, as God bless you with your dream home or your dream car. You know, my coach used to tell me in high school, Bowens, don't act like your dude don't stink. And I used to be like, what? <laughs> what is he talking about? You know, because at that time, I guess, you know, when I would score the ball or I would do something good, I'd be celebrating, I'd be dancing. And it seemed cocky. And I didn't even realize that. That's just the environment that I grew up in. You know, that, you know, when you do something, you kind of celebrate in your opponent's face. And he used to say, you know what? That's that's arrogant. That's an arrogant attitude. You should not do that. You should have a humble attitude. Humble attitude means you can take correction. Humble attitude means you can know you're good at something, but not think you're better than other people. A humble attitude knows that all your blessings, everything that you have, comes from the goodness and the grace of God. Without him, you would have nothing. So you could be talented, you could be gifted in particular areas of life, but you know that all the blessings, all your talent, all everything that you're experiencing comes from the hand of God. And because of that, it should cause you to be humble. Like, man, look what God has done in my life. Look at the abilities that God has given me. I used to live like this and now look how I'm living. My income used to be like this, but now look how my, my income is thriving. You know, I used to always want to live in a house like this and now look at the house that I have. Or I used to always want a ministry like this and now look at my ministry. You know, I used to be on the bus. So I used to, I don't know, have this kind of job and look where I have my own business now. You should be so humble that it's not hard for people to talk to you. You know, I've met some people who God has blessed them amazingly, but they are some of the most arrogant people that you ever want to talk to, that you don't even want to talk to them again. If you had the opportunity, you just pass on it. Eh, I'm good. Don't really want to talk to them because they act as if they may have more success than you, but they act like they're better than you. Like you don't deserve to breathe the same air. And I'm saying to myself, are you kidding me? What makes you think that the air you breathe is better than the air that I breathe? Okay? And so that's something that you have to, re to remember. The Bible says that God resists the proud. But the, those who humble themselves, he exalts them. Right? To the humble, he gives grace. He gives flight. He gives wings. Because they are humble. Humble enough to ask him for help. Humble enough to ask him for forgiveness. Humble enough to thank him for his blessings. Humble enough to have gratitude. You know, it's a message that I believe I did some time ago called the attitude of gratitude. Even if you have children, when you do something for them and they're like, thank you, daddy, it makes you want to do more for them. But you give them something and they just take it and just kind of put it down like what you gave them. I didn't really want that. So I don't care. 
you're like, huh, really? See you when the next time I buy you something. See when the next time I go out my way to go to the store to get you something. It's not going to happen until I see an attitude of gratitude. And God is the same way. Okay? Next part is hungry. First, I said you got to be humble. I mean, you got to be holy. Then you got to be humble. The next part, last part I want to talk to you about for a few minutes is staying hungry. As you are living a holy lifestyle and God is blessing you, you want to remain humble. So as you go up, you don't just come down, right? You don't want to burn bridges with people. But as you're going up, you got to stay hungry. Because what I have noticed throughout the years, I've seen people who have achieved success, but when they achieve the success, they don't work hard anymore. When they achieve the success, they don't hit the gym anymore. When they achieve the success, they don't study anymore. When they achieve the success, they do not put the same amount of effort in as when they did not have anything trying to accomplish their goal, trying to be what it is that they felt in their heart they wanted to be. Now, I want to talk about Floyd Mayweather for a second. Not his spiritual life. Not how he conducts himself. Just the fact that um, he's able to, he was able to become a boxing champion and remain a boxing champion throughout the, his entire career. That's the part I'm focusing on. Because for the fact that he was able to achieve what he achieved in the sport of boxing, but still get up every day and run 10 miles. Listen, some people get a $2 raise and they start showing up to work late. Put their feet up on the desk. What up, what up, what up, what's up? You know, they don't put in the same amount of effort that they put in when they first was trying to get the raise in the first place. You got to stay hungry. You got to keep that vision inside of you. And that when you reach your goals, you got to set new goals so that you don't become stagnant, so that you don't become lazy, so that you don't be become um, a person who rests on their laurels. You got to become the person that, hey, I reached this goal. OK, boom. Now let me get a new goal. Let me take it higher so that you can work towards that. And you reach those goals. Boom. Let me take it higher so that you could constantly be working towards your goals because then if you if you reach every goal that you have set and you don't reach and you don't set any new goals life becomes boring and you're like I, I really don't have nothing to do but guess what everybody always has something to do you always have new goals to reach you always can help more people you always can influence more people you always can serve more people you always can set up something to benefit not only yourself but other people so there's always a new goal to reach but are you willing to take the time to think about it, to see God on it, and then set the goal and begin to work towards it? So you got to stay hungry. You got to stay hungry because even if you're starting at the bottom, right? And you keep getting knocked down. You keep getting knocked down. You keep Life keeps punching you in the face. Life keeps punching you in the jaw. Life does not give you any breaks. But when you stay hungry... You're able to stay focused. You're able to stay motivated and keep moving. Pushing them stones out the way. Pushing them boulders out the way. Pushing those obstacles out the way. Because you know, as you keep moving forward, right? You're going to get to your goal. But you can't look back. You can't sit there and cry. You can't moan and complain. You can't whine because things are not happening in the time you think they should happen. You got to stay hungry and continue to press forward, continue to move forward in spite of how you feel, in spite of how other people view you. See, I will take this time to say you need to have a healthy self image. You got to see yourself as God sees you, as the righteousness of God, as a king, as a queen, right? And that's what the Bible says that we are kings and priests. Right? You're not a you're not a slack. You're not a popper. Right? You're not a person that's a loser. You're a winner. Everything you put your hand to is prosperous. You bless when you come, you bless when you go. The Bible said that Joseph was in prison and he still was considered wealthy because the presence of God was with him. So I don't care how much money you have in the bank. I don't care where you live or what you drive or what you don't drive. 
as long as the presence of God is around you and in you, you are rich. And you can overcome every obstacle and every trial and every circumstance that you are facing right now to become who God said that you could be. Stay hungry. Don't allow anything to quench that hunger, that desire, that thirst for you to overcome and to succeed and be who God created you to be. I pray this message inspires somebody, encourage somebody to live their best life now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year, but today in Jesus' name. Until next time, this is your man Mike Bowens, and I'm signing off saying, be blessed.